So in our app, we have uh, no way to easily access those Twitter accounts. So let's talk about adding it to our nav bar on the left side and then having a link to go to OmniAuth and then to Twitter and then add a feature so we can destroy those Twitter accounts. Now Rails has a route helper that we can use for situations like this. So let's add this resources, Twitter accounts. Resources is going to generate all of those CRUD actions and it's going to set them up so that we have the show which is Twitter accounts slash ID. And it's gonna be an interchangeable number here, which will be our database ID. And we can grab individual ones, but we'll also have a delete request for the same URL, Twitter accounts ID. And we'll be able to delete those. So if we want to remove a connection, we can do that as well. Um, so this is something that we can use to generate the index, the show, the new, the create, edit, update, and delete routes automatically for us. So if we do that, this will also set the two to the Twitter accounts controller. So we don't even have to specify that. We just simply drop in resources, Twitter accounts, and it will generate all the routes for us. So we'll say Twitter accounts controller dot RB class Twitter accounts controller application controller and we can define the uh, actions that we want to use. It'll generate all those URLs but we don't have to implement all of them and so we can just define the ones we want to use. So we'll say Twitter accounts current .user .twitter accounts. We can go into our nav bar and we can go on the left side here and say uh, Twitter We'll leave the, let's leave the about in there um, and we'll go and add Twitter accounts and it will be the Twitter accounts path, which will be automatically generated for the index route. So now if we refresh, we'll see that that is loaded and we're gonna need to create a view for this. So we'll go into app views. We'll add a folder called Twitter accounts. And then our index will go in there. So we'll have index HTML.erb, Twitter accounts, and we will have all of our Twitter accounts that we can loop through. Twitter accounts dot each do Twitter account. And we'll create a div and we'll print out the Twitter account dot username and close the div and close our loop. So that's gonna print out all of our connected Twitter accounts and then we can have a link to connect a Twitter account which will go to auth slash Twitter. There's no helper for this um, the way we have it with OmniAuth because it doesn't even show up in our Rails routes and this will work fine. So we'll just say button, button, primary for that. Now we should be able to click on this and see our Twitter accounts listed here. So this works great and we can just click this button now and it will take us to Twitter and bring us back. Now we might want to update our OmniAuth callbacks controller to go instead of to the root path to our Twitter accounts path. So we can see that new account that we just connected. So we'll close that and we will try it again and it should take us back here with that notification. There we go. There is one problem with our Twitter accounts controller though. If we were to access this from incognito where we're logged out, we're gonna get an error. It's gonna say undefined method Twitter accounts for nil class. And whenever you see this undefined method, you're gonna want to pay attention to the method it was calling, Twitter accounts. You'll look for that and then you'll look at the thing before it and say, that returned nil, and so we know that nil was current user. So nobody's logged in is what it's basically saying here. It's not quite as descriptive as that, but you can deduce that by saying, okay, this thing must have been nil, which means we don't have a current user, so you must not be logged in. So we can go back to our application controller and 
take a look at our require user logged in method, see that, oh yeah, this will make perfect sense. And we can have a before action here of require user logged in for this route. So now we can go visit that and we're gonna be redirected to the sign in page if we're not logged in. That will solve our problem. So now we can access this uh, only as logged in users. So then from here, we can go and uh, improve our layout a little bit. It'd be great if we had some organization to this, like moving the button to the right side. So we can do that using some bootstrap classes. Dflex, which is going to turn this div into a flex div. And we can refresh and you'll see the button now is awkwardly sized, but it does show up on the same line. So we can go make some adjustments to this and say align items center and justify content between. The content between is gonna push it to the other side. And then we can go to the Twitter accounts that we have for uh, this each, and we can go and add a class to that as well. So we'll say deflex and align items center. And then we will also add a margin bottom of say four, and we can add an image tag in here for the Twitter account dot image. So we can display your avatar and we'll have rounded circle as a class around that. So we're also gonna wrap this in a um, margin end of four so that we can add a disconnect button around this Twitter account as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like right now. Adds our account and we have Twitter's uh, username in there. We can also change this to if we wanna say link to and we'll say at before the username and we'll link to https twitter.com slash twitter account dot username and we'll also put a target blank at the end to make it open in a new tab so this is going to make it easier for you to see which Twitter account you were on. This is my Twitter account, and I can just click on that and go visit that. But we'll want that button to delete our Twitter account so we can remove it. So here we'll add a button to disconnect, and this will link to the Twitter account. And one of the things about Rails is that we've been using those URL helpers. If you actually give it an active record model, it will figure out how to generate the URL for you. So if you say Twitter account, that's an active record instance, and it will convert that to slash Twitter accounts slash ID. So in our case, that might be one or two or three or four or any number, and that will generate it for you. The one thing we have to say here is we wanna run the method of delete so that we can have it actually delete that. We don't wanna just go visit that uh, Twitter account, which is what it would do by default. Um, so we'll put in method delete. And then Rails has a data confirm that you can add and you can say, are you sure? And this will trigger a browser modal to confirm the action. So if we click disconnect, there will be a browser modal that says, are you sure? And you can cancel that or you can hit okay and take you to the destroy action. So we need to implement that destroy action to remove the Twitter account. And that's very simple. We'll say destroy at Twitter account equals current user dot Twitter accounts dot find params ID. Now the way that this works is we're gonna go look up the Twitter accounts association for the user, and then we're gonna find a record out of that. And the Rails resources route as you will see here with Twitter account slash two, it is going to pull out this number as the ID in the URL. So when we run Rails routes, you will see that we get the Twitter accounts with an ID here, and this will be in the params. So whatever number is in the URL will be converted to 
the params hash as the ID. So now if we reset this and we go back and click, oops, we're missing an end here. We should finish that. We'll redirect to the Twitter account's path. And we can say uh, notice or anything that we might want in there. So let's try this now. If we click this, we have to click OK. It will submit a delete request to Rails with the URL, with the ID in it. We'll be able to pull out the ID, query the database, find the record, delete it, and then redirect back to this page. Now, we don't actually have a delete in here yet, so let's do that before we try it. So we'll say Twitter account dot destroy and that will actually delete it out of the database. But it will also run callbacks, which allows you to delete other associated records if you need to. So you always want to call destroy to delete it out of your database. So let's try it now and see what happens. Okay, our record is gone now. And if we look at our Rails logs, we'll see the delete request for Twitter accounts two. The number two was pulled out of the URL and set in the parameters as ID of two. We go through, we load the user, make sure they're logged in. We find their Twitter accounts with the ID of two. So that's where we're finding that. And then we call destroy, which will delete from the Twitter accounts table. And then we redirect back to the Twitter accounts path. And then that starts this request to actually render the Twitter accounts page. So now um, we can add a notice and say successfully disconnected uh, your Twitter account. And we can print out at Twitter account dot username here to actually show which Twitter account we removed, which is kind of handy. So let's connect our Twitter account and try to disconnect it. So we'll see successfully disconnected at exit three. So it is able to reference that even though it's been deleted out of the database on this. It deletes it out of the database on this line, but it keeps it in memory so you can still reference the data just until the action is finished. And that is it. So now we have a index page here for our Twitter accounts and we can connect them and disconnect them.